the world's fastest subsonic jetliner. But all planes grow old, and now this one must be scrapped. Go ahead and shut everything down. I'm going to close the valve. All six million parts. There's still more to go. And 66 tons of high-strength aluminum. The mechanics must recycle as much as possible to recoup $6.8 million. But it's their first 747 teardown. And doing it right go, 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 go. is a jumbo-sized challenge. They'll risk their lives moving pieces as large as cars in scorching temperatures to break it down. This 747 Jumbo is on its last flight. It's an old player in the game of air travel. And now it must retire. Time for one final touchdown. Over the past 24 years, this plane has flown enough to circle the world 1,200 times. Now, it's arrived at a desert tarmac in Goodyear, Arizona. This is the home of Aero Turbine, a company that specializes in all things aircraft. Let's go ahead and prep these. Roger Hodges is the maintenance manager. Usually he repairs aircraft, but this one is different for one good reason. It's worth more dead than alive. So basically... This 747 is now beyond repair. It's old and too expensive to maintain. But rather than trash it, Roger will make sure it's carefully pulled apart, piece by piece. Just like cars or anything else aren't going to last forever. There's still many parts with, within the airframe and engines that are worth sending to overhaul. 30% of this airplane will be utilized in, the, in future uh, 747s. The Jumbo's parts are so interchangeable because the plane's basic design has changed little since its first commercial flight in 1970. Back then, it took several hundred people and four months to make a plane. Now, just a handful of mechanics will attempt to tear one apart in only 12 weeks. Among them, Derek Pfeiffer. He runs the crew from the ground. We'll get in there with a ratchet and a socket and get them out. Lyle Bonebreak is in charge of snakes on this plane. Oh, <laughs> While Pete Faulkner will try to dodge them. That was good. <laughs> that was Jesus. All are experts in their own right. Only one problem. None of them have ever pulled apart an aircraft this big. This is a first. The Boeing 747 is the biggest aircraft we had to tear down so far. All right, you ready? It's by far maybe the biggest challenge. It's just huge. We don't want to damage it. We don't want to get hurt. Everything they do will be a learning experience. They must rely heavily on the manuals that were used to build this plane more than two decades ago. Big parts. Everything's like four to five times heavier than we're accustomed to. It takes tooling, it takes slings to be able to handle that kind of weight. See that junk in the back? It'll be a four-step process. First, workers must gently remove the engines. Four elephant-sized jets to be handled like eggs. Second, they must remove and inventory any resellable item from piping to coffee makers. 65 Bravo, 94. All can return to service on other aircraft. Third, 
they must extract hazardous material like depleted uranium and take it to a safe location. Workers will also strip and trash anything else of little value, like worn seat covers and insulation. Finally, they must crush the remaining metal so it can be melted into solid bars of aluminum. And from there, made into other objects like electronics, hardware, even furniture. The aim is to recycle an incredible 98% of the aircraft and reclaim spare parts and scrap worth about $6.8 million. No! The team starts by detaching the biggest and most valuable items, the four engines, each weighing 5.4 tons. An engine can cost $5 million. There you go. Even these second-hand engines, if carefully removed, can still fetch $1.5 million each. This particular airplane, it arrived, the engines were, were sold uh, when, it, when it came here. So, of course, that was the first thing. They're in high demand. The new owner wants the engines back in service without delay. We just try to do it you know, in a timely manner, and uh, as long as everybody's safe. The team is on the clock. Two engines are mounted under each wing. They are the muscles that propel this beast. In flight, they power the 747 to speeds upward of 900 kilometers per hour. Start loosening up the bolts. To remove them, mechanics must essentially disconnect two systems. Okay, you come down. At lower altitudes, where the air is thicker, 38 internal fan blades drive a turbo fan system. But at high altitudes, the air is too thin for the fans to work alone. A core compressor takes over. It sucks air into the opening and compresses it so it's under pressure. Like the air that blows up car tires. The compressed air mixes with the fuel. This combination is ignited to create the combustion that propels the airplane. The mechanics must disconnect the two systems that drive each engine and lower them all in one piece. And they must do it fast for the new owner. They clip 16 electrical connectors, detach three hydraulic lines, for it, thank you. cap the main fuel supply, and undo 375 fasteners. One wrong move and someone could be killed. No one understands that more than mechanic Dean Klepper. Well, if it comes forward, it might come forward. It's, it's very dangerous work. Aircraft shift can knock you over. When you're running engines, you can be sucked in, blown over. Um, the, the industry is very dangerous. Dean's brother was also an aircraft mechanic. In 2003, Rick Klepper was crushed when an engine slipped from a forklift. The motor all disconnected. They were backing the engine away on a forklift. The cable got hung up. The engine put a little tension on the cable. The forklift swung the engine forward, pinned my brother against the aircraft. It uh, ruptured his heart and uh, one lung, uh, and uh, he died right on the spot. Dean keeps a picture of Rick on the back of his ID badge, a close reminder for everyone to watch their step. It takes three mechanics about four hours to prepare an engine for removal. So hold on. Oh, oh, loosen up a little bit. They hook up the hoist kit to support the first engine. Alright, all right, I'm gonna pull it down a little bit, alright? So hold on. Oh, oh, a slip with a 5.4-ton engine could be catastrophic. Loosen up a little bit. Down. Yeah. 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 And they have four of these giants to get down. So we can come up even. Getting a 747's engine safely to the ground requires a team effort. Howard, I'm going to pull down a little bit, all right? All right, Howard. That'll work. 
Right. The mouth of each engine yawns nearly three meters across. These so engines weigh like 11,500 pounds. These tailor-made slings will catch and cradle the nearly six-ton machines to ensure neither the engines nor the crew are damaged in the process. We want the chain falls even, so when we get ready to come down with the engine, the engine will kind of swing on us. Finally, they gently lower the first engine. It takes a week for the mechanics to remove all the engines. But it's well worth it. The four engines will deliver a total of six million dollars. But the job doesn't end here. To get the most from this aircraft, they still need to find another $800,000 in spare parts. Their next job is the new priority for cash and for safety. Inside each 747 wing sit two giant fuel tanks and a reserve tank. Each wing can hold 64,000 liters of fuel. A central tank under the seats holds an additional 64,000 liters. This aircraft arrived with its wing tanks about 20% full. They must be emptied now so the tanks have time to dry out. If the tanks aren't dry by the time workers demolish the fuselage, the plane could explode. This is no simple stop and pump operation. Access to this highly flammable liquid sits nine meters in the air. Stephen Collins is specially trained for defueling aircraft. Yeah, all these airplanes that come in, we uh, recycle all the fuel that comes off of them. But this is Stephen's first 747, and there's a problem. Dane, are you there? Go ahead. He can't get the fuel out. We have no fuel movement down here. He coordinates with mechanic Dane Zimmerman in the cockpit. Go ahead and shut everything down. I'm going to close the valves. The problem is a safety latch on the tank. It's unique to this type of plane, but an easy fix. And they finish extracting the fuel. $30,000 worth. Until this point, the plane has been operating on its own power. Now, that power must be shut off so electronics can be safely removed. It's a major step in the journey from aircraft to scrap. Okay, fueling's done. Uh, we're going to kill power. Get my tools, pull out these instruments. No power means no air conditioning for the crew working in the confined spaces of the aircraft's innards. Dane must remove more than 100 cockpit instruments. They're extremely fragile and must be taken out early on to reduce the chance of accidental damage. But now the temperature rises for every minute he's in the cabin. This is the 22nd day this summer. The mercury will hit 110 degrees or more. Teardowns normally take place in the hangar, but this jumbo is too jumbo to fit through the hangar doors. That's double the number of super hot days Phoenix usually has. The plane must stay out, and the crew must work in the heat. Outside, mechanics start to unscrew, unhook, and unfasten this 747 piece by piece. But soon, it's like pulling apart a furnace. Take the airplane apart outside, this heat is draining and just is draining us. To beat the sun, the crew arrives at 5 a.m. But there's little relief, even at this hour. And the thermometer already reads 99. It's gonna get much hotter. The scorching heat makes the metal hot to touch and dangerous to work with. 
The real work has only just begun. A little bit of oil. This 747 bakes in the Arizona sun. The cabin becomes an oven. Dane Zimmerman keeps sweating to remove this old jumbo's cockpit gauges. But Dane's job is an important part of recycling this aircraft. Most, if not all, of these gauges will be recalibrated and sold. They'll still work on newer 747s and other aircraft. On the second-hand market, they'll fetch around $75,000. Those cockpit instruments sit in a location unique among aircraft, the second story. The 747 is the only passenger plane to have one. The aircraft can hold 175 cubic meters of cargo, or with seats, 452 passengers. In the 1970s, Boeing took the marketing of this spacious interior to new heights. The Harlem Globetrotters would like to show you what the Boeing 747 is really all about. So welcome aboard the biggest, most luxurious plane in the sky, the 747, where you can move around with all the freedom in the world. Space like you've never known before. Headroom, legroom, elbow room. A plane with an upstairs captured the public imagination. You'll have a ball. A lounge for first class passengers. Getting people together. And of course, home to the highest cockpit mechanic Dane Zimmerman has ever tackled. The cockpit instruments are easy to reach. They are like the eyes and ears of the aircraft. But unhooking the brains of this plane presents more of a challenge. They sit below the cockpit, hidden in a one by four meter closet behind the nose and just below the first floor. This is the avionics bay. Avionics means aviation electronics. Fuel systems, flight controls, and communications instruments all run out of this small room. This is Dane's specialty. Every box in here pretty much controls this aircraft from start to finish. The pilots like to think they do, but it's really these boxes. The big problem is getting them from up here to down there because they're so heavy. Usually it's a two-man job, sometimes three, depending on if your arms are long or not. Handled properly, these instruments will live to see another day. These boxes will be shipped out for overhaul and then they can be used on other aircraft. And there's still more to go. Combined, the boxes from the avionics bay are worth $100,000. Two avionics devices to go. The plane's flight recorder and cockpit voice recorder, or the black boxes, have their own special location. These boxes record flight information and the pilot's voice to help those investigating any mishap. They sit above the passenger's cabin in the back of the aircraft a section engineers have deemed more likely to survive a major accident. Surprisingly, the so-called black boxes aren't black. These are the infamous black boxes. As you can see, they're painted orange, which is always kind of funny. But the reason for the color is so they can be found if an aircraft crashes. The term black box comes from the general term for all avionics boxes. All the others are black. With the removal of these final two boxes, Dane's job inside the plane is done. But the removal of parts is only a portion of this enormous challenge. Keeping track of what's removed is a mind-boggling affair. Among the parts still to be salvaged, eight kilometers of tubing. 275 kilometers of wiring 
and three million fasteners. Much of which can be found here, in the belly of the beast. Hatches provide access to four spaces, each the size of a van crammed with pipes and ducts. For the mechanics, it's like gutting a giant bird, but they must track every feather. This is an air conditioning bay. This is one of the first areas we start in. Uh, and by the time we're done, it'll be completely empty. Pete Faulkner is one of five mechanics who's on this job for the full 12 weeks. Um, it's just time, you know, time consuming. To get the most out of this old aircraft, Recyclable parts must be taken off and correctly cataloged. But finding the part number can be as tricky as the removal itself. But a lot of these parts with ducting, panels, various things like that, they can be worn off or uh, they can be quite diff difficult. Most of them are usually worn off. They're only a stamp. Ah, right there. There's the assembly number. 65 Bravo. 9-4-200. The crew then records each part number on a tag. Uh, as the parts are being removed, we have to fill out a removal tag. And what we do, we put the registration number, service number, the uh, nomenclature of the part, and pretty much the part number, serial number. Then we tag the item and put it over in the cage over there so they can put it into the system. Usually we go around maybe 500 to 1,000 tags or more on this aircraft. This is such a big aircraft. Once tagged, they take the pieces to aircraft inspector John Lister. John confirms the identity of each part removed from the airplane. That's a big business. Just about every part that comes off an aircraft, just about every part can be refurbished and re-put on another aircraft. From complex electronics to ducting, flight controls to hydraulic tubing, even the most commonplace items can have real value. There's certain parts you might look at sitting on a shelf and say, who would ever want that and whatnot, but the fact that it come off of an aircraft, it has a value to it. Here's a coffee maker that's removed, and it's obviously seen better, better days. They will keep these things on the shelf with a fresh tag because coffee makers go out quite often. There's nothing worse than a flight attendant hates when their coffee makers and their ovens and whatnot aren't working. John's coffee maker could go for upward of $2,000. Parts that are regularly damaged are in high demand. That includes one of the most valuable sections on the jumbo, its nose. The tip of the nose is called the ray dome. Each ray dome is specially made to protect the aircraft's weather radar. The antenna inside communicates weather systems to the pilot. It must withstand regular wind blasts over 800 kilometers an hour, faster than any hurricane. A used nose in good condition is a valuable part of any jet. But to tweak this bird's beak, mechanics must scale new heights, three stories up. There's nothing on a 4.7 you can reach uh, without a lift, some type of swing, uh, lifting apparatus to get it on. The nose is built to stick. Loosening each bolt around the cone is an awkward and tedious process. Opening this massive cowl requires yet another lift and a third crew member. A fall from this height could be fatal, so everyone is strapped in. You're tight off in there, but it's not stable. It does move around. If you think something's falling, and you automatically, it's just, just a little nerve-wracking at times. A lot of people can't take that. Uh, don't like the heights. I'm, I'm not real crazy about it myself. Okay. All right, hold it. It's going to start coming loose. All right. Good to go, though. Hey, Jeff. Yeah. Come down just a little bit. They get the nose open revealing the aircraft's weather radar worth $5,000. The antenna heads for the warehouse, and the team heads back up to finish the toughest part of the nose job, removing the cover entirely. 
The radome weighs 90 kilograms and measures about two meters across. To remove it, they must work as a team. Just, just, just rotate it. Yeah, it's just rotate. It's just bring it to me. Get okay, ready. Together, they bring it down safely. Look on the side. The nose cone can be resold for fifteen thousand dollars.